Hello, hello. I just wanted to come on and share um, just an experience that I had the other day. Um, just really using the Word of God in a practical manner and it um, bringing immediate results for me. So I pray that everyone is having a great day, evening, whatever time of day it is for you. Um, I pray that it's a blessed time. Um, so the other day, I probably about two days ago, I woke up kind of like in the middle of the night um, and just had, I was laying there for a minute. It was like 1 a.m. And I was laying there for a minute and just all of a sudden this anxiety came on me. And um, I was just trying to lay there and like, basically like wish it away like you know just calm myself calm my breathing and all of that and I'm like okay this is not going away um and I started praying and the Holy Spirit put uh Luke ten nineteen in my spirit and so I started confessing that just saying it over and over and over and uh, for those of you who don't know, Luke ten nineteen says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Um, the, t uh, the Passion Translation says, Now you understand that I have imparted to you my authority to trample over his kingdom. You will trample upon every demon before you and overcome every power Satan possesses. Absolutely nothing will harm you as you walk in this authority. So I know the situation that was kind of causing me to have the anxiety, but the fact that it just came on me and I just kind of woke up, it was like, okay, this is, I, I'm not gonna just let this sit on me. And so I continued to say that scripture over and over. Um, and then the other scripture that kind of came to me, it was several scriptures that came to me was um, leaning not to my own understanding and Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. But the one um, that I really stood on that night was that God has not given me the spirit of fear. Um, and that's in 2 Timothy 1, 7. So um, knowing that that is a weapon that the enemy will use, the Holy Spirit also gave me Matthew fifteen thirteen, uh, which says that every plant that my heavenly father has not planted shall be rooted up. And so I, if I know that the spirit of fear is not from God, then that's a plant that is in me that is not, that needs to be rooted up. And so I begin to declare that as well. And so as soon as I began to, you know, say it over and over and um, just confess it and declare it, like it immediately left, like the anxiety just left. And so I was like so thankful and so grateful, but it was a teaching moment for me to know that, a reminder for me to continue to declare the word of God. Um, and as I was remembering this the next day, you know, well, that same day when I woke up and I was writing it in my journal, the Holy Spirit also began to um, give me other scriptures to kind of substantiate what you know the situation at hand and so james 4 and 7 says submit to god uh, resist the devil and he will flee uh, john 1 and 1 says in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god and james 5 and 16 says uh you know effective fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much so in giving in saying that there is an effective way to me that means that there is also an ineffective way that we can be praying and declaring um or praying things and not praying them in the most effective way and so when we encounter things um we may be speaking something to that situation but is it being effective um, because we can be saying things but we're still dealing with the same things over and over and become the, it becomes this cycle and it's lasting longer than we want it to last it's you know more than a day more than a week more than a month more than a year 
And so it becomes this cycle type of situation. And so I looked up the word resist and it says to withstand, oppose, to stand firm. And so a, another scripture that the Holy Spirit reminded me of um, as I was, like I said, as I was writing this through, he was just bringing scriptures to me was when uh, the situation when Jesus was tempted by the devil in Luke. And in Luke 4 and 4, uh, Luke 4 and 8, I'll just read it. Let's see. So... Luke 4 and 4. Well, I'll start at 3. And the devil said unto him, this was after Jesus had been fasting for 40 days. Um, and it says he was a hunger in uh, verse 2. Verse 3, it says, and the devil said unto him, if thou be the son of man, command this stone that it be made bread. Verse 4, and Jesus answered him saying, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Verse five, and the devil taking him up into a high mountain showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee and the glory of them for, th for that is delivered unto me and to whomsoever I give it. If thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto him, get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Verse 9, And he brought him to Jerusalem, and set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee, and in their hands shall bear, shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. Verse 12, and Jesus answering unto him, it is said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So what the Holy Spirit was telling me or um, teaching me, reminding me in this passage of scripture is that just like in, um, where was it? James 4 and 7, Jesus submitted to the word of God because we know that the word, God is a word in John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And so in submitting, Jesus submitted to the word and he resisted Satan by speaking the word. And so in that, Satan came back to him. They went back and forth three times. And then uh, in verse 13, it says, when, and when the devil had ended all his temptation, he departed from him for a season. So it goes back to James 4 and 7, where it says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee, meaning the devil. And so we see that clearly in Luke 4, where that that James 4 and 7 is clearly, you know, displayed to be an encouragement to us that as we submit to God, as we submit to the word, um, and resist the devil in declaring the word back to him what god said he's art because he's already defeated then he will re he will uh flee from us and so ephesians 6 and 17 says the sword it, it does ephesians 6 goes through um the full armor of god and so it talks about the sword of the spirit which is the word of god so that is what our defense is that is what we use against every attack of the enemy um and I'm just going through my notes and going through the scriptures that God gave me in reference to this whole teaching moment. And so uh, also in Isaiah 55, 11, um, God says that his word would not return unto him void. It will accomplish that which he pleases. And so that kind of goes back to what I was saying. Are we praying effectively when we are trying to come against, you know, if we feel the opposition or the attack that the enemy is um, bringing toward us or to us, are we praying effectively? Are we saying, you know, what God declares? Are we saying how we feel? Or are we saying just whatever comes to mind to try to defeat him um, in, in not praying effectively or fighting effectively? 
And so if we are declaring the word of God, then we know that we are fighting effectively because God only responds to his word. He's not going to, he can only, he's only obligated to defend his word or um, make his word come to pass, not what we say and what just what we desire. Um, and so the last scripture is 1 John 5, 14 and 15, that this is the confidence that we have that if we ask anything according to his will, we know that he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, then we have the petitions that we desire of him. And so all of this was, again, like I said, a teaching moment and a reminder for me of when the enemy is trying to come against us and bring things that God has not planned for us, the fear, the anxiety, the stress, the depression, like all of these things, we have the weapons, the true weapons to fight against it. We have effective weapons to fight against it. And we see in Luke 4 that Jesus gave us a great example of how to fight and use the word against the devil. And he already said in James 4 and 7 that if we submit to God's word, if we use his word, the sword that he is giving us to fight against the enemy, to resist him, to keep pushing him back as he's trying to push against us, then if we continue to resist with the word, then he has to flee. And so I think that's all I want to say. I don't want to prolong anything, but I just pray that this is a blessing to you. And um, yes, have a great rest of your day or night whenever you're watching and God bless.